It's Clark, Clark and Perry on the case. Ja, na, na, na. Clark and Perry do what it takes. Ja, na, na, na. Clark and Perry investigate. The activities and interests of local artists in the Windy City's finest throughout both Lethbridge and Medicine Hat, Alberta. Available on Telus, Optic TV, On Demand, Bidflex, YouTube, and more for limited time only. Terms and conditions apply. Ja, na, na, na. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Windy City's Finest. I'm Perry. He's Clark, and we are joined today by Eli Duick. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining with us today yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, coming to talk with us. Um, I think we'll just dive right into the questions if we can. Yeah, yeah, no, perfect. Awesome. So the first one we have for you is, uh, what are you most proud of about yourself? About myself? Okay, so not even necessarily my art, just in general. Just generally, yeah. Yeah. Um, that is a very good question. I, maybe it's my ability to observe things, I mm. suppose. Um, just, yeah, like I've, I think I do a, an okay job of paying attention to important and relevant details, whether or not it's in school or maybe in some of the art I've done. Yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe just on like a personal level as well. I like mm -hmm. to think that I'm kind of, you know, like I guess sensitive in that regard. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. I think that's awesome. And actually, like, that's one of the first things that kind of came to my mind when you said that was like, uh, do, do you think that that plays a part in your artistry, your ability to observe things and, and maybe translate that into an image or an idea? Uh, I think so, yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, I guess because a lot of what I do in art, yeah, it does come down to almost like a ruminative fixation on like details, I think. So mm -hmm. maybe that's just like a tendency I've naturally had and then it found a certain outlet in art, yeah. possibly. I don't yeah. know. No, absolutely. And, yeah. and, and uh, I've worked with you a little bit and I know that, yeah, you are very good. Your attention to detail is very good. Oh. And I think, you know, listening skills and observational skills. Um, and uh, and I understand potentially does that also come in handy for your work outside of your art? Your, um, the attention to detail. Cause... Yeah, definitely. And um, I guess like in a very different way than it's applicable to other aspects of my life, mm -hmm. to uh, art namely. Um, but yeah, I guess going through university as a biochemist and then working as a lab analyst as of late, um, also a very rigid adherence to small, almost pedantic details <laughs> is kind of the thing that makes or breaks most of what happens in that field. So, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I love that. Yeah, I love that. Um, I love that. Um, our next question mm -hmm. is... Uh, along the same lines, but is uh, what is your greatest accomplishment? And we can maybe do both or one or the other of just life or maybe your artwork. My greatest accomplishment, yeah. Huh. <laughs> that is, uh, you know, another very, uh, very good, a very hard question, I, I would know, say. Yeah. <laughs> I guess when you're put on the spot to like it's name to the think. number one, like ultimate thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe, Probably most recently, just in the net, like within the re last four years, I would say it was probably, um, yeah, successfully completing my master's degree at the University of Lethbridge. Um, grad school, it was like an immensely rewarding um, experience. Um, it was also a meat grinder. And uh, <laughs> yeah, like I guess, I mean, I'd heard from a lot of people how like an advanced degree really would um, test a person in ways they weren't quite anticipating mm -hmm. and um, that certainly was the case in, in my case um, yeah. I got through it um, I'm very glad I did but it was also harrowing and very scary at points but uh, I'm very glad that I was able to um, wrap up my research project properly and get out in the midst of COVID and a bunch of other stuff yeah, um, yeah. I guess I am quite proud of that yeah, yeah. no, that is quite the achievement for sure and mm -hmm. and it was a master's uh, was it in biochem? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah, it was yeah. a master's of science degree um, mm -hmm. in biochemistry. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Uh, and, and as far as your artwork is concerned, mm -hmm. I'm just going to, we have a lovely friend here to the side of you oh, yeah. in the form of one of your works. Uh, so maybe if, Brent, if Clark can kind of showcase this. Um, but could you tell us a little bit about this? Because it is a large canvas. Certainly. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, this is a painting. It's called Antikythera. Um, I did it 10 years ago, actually. It was completed in uh, spring 2013. Uh, it was for my art IB class. And actually, this is also the uh, first 
painting that I ever did as, um, as an artist. Um, <laughs> I mainly was working in pencil um, in high school. I had the opportunity to do something a bit larger for uh, the Arts Alive and Well in the Schools exhibition. Right on. Uh, my art teacher gave me some options at the time. Uh, I don't know, I was really into Renaissance painting. Uh, I was inspired by that. So my dad helped to, my dad built the canvas itself. Um, him and I stretched it with like a stapler. I primed it, which uh, priming a canvas, it was like so many more liters of gesso than I was anticipating right. a lot of hours. Um, and then after that, I had to start the painting itself on a very yeah. tight timeline without having to know how to paint. So it was very scary at the time, but wow. you no, know, I got it done. Um, and that's what that is, yeah, behind us. <laughs> and I'm sorry, so this was your first piece of artwork? Uh, my first painting I've ever done. Painting. So um, mainly I was, yeah, like I've, I've mainly done stuff in graphite and pen, I'd say, for the majority of my mm -hmm. time as an artist. Yeah. And uh, yeah, about 10 years ago, starting with this piece was where I branched out into painting. Um, acrylic and that's sort of the only painting I've explored since then. Wow. Yeah. That is incredible. Wow. And uh, <laughs> I understand like it is probably supposed to be horizontal, but yeah, it no. actually looks quite cool vertical. As I well. think so. <laughs> um, and just due to practical reasons, uh, I was never able to find a good place to hang it horizontally as intended. Mm -hmm. I was contemplating a French cleat system or something. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, then life happens. I went to school. So if anything, I almost come to think of it more in terms of its accidental vertical orientation yeah. than I do its original intended orientation. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Cool. Awesome. Um, well, I'm glad we got to showcase that. And I'm sure we'll dive into some other yeah. pieces of your work later. Uh, but our next question for you is, uh, what are you still hoping to accomplish? Yeah, uh, I guess the short version would be to um, do a lot more art than I currently have up until this mm. point in time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, because what that makes me think of is during your master's program, yeah. were you able to kind of practice your craft a lot or not really? Um, or? Not nearly to the extent I wanted to. Uh, yeah. Not at all, hardly. So uh, I guess maybe an interesting thing that kind of happened throughout my time as a student. So yeah, like uh, I went to high school uh, just here in Lethbridge. Uh, I did the art international baccalaureate program at Winston Churchill for okay. quite a while I was intending to like I thought I just was going to go into art school to uh, pursue maybe a career as an artist mm -hmm. however uh, in the latter years of grade school uh, I was also really enjoying the science side of things I really enjoyed mathematics and uh, the sciences mm -hmm. uh, the humanities as well I liked a lot of things so um you know art was only maybe one aspect of what I was really into and of course when you're very young, like 17, 18, you kind of have this like unbridled curiosity and energy about the world. So yeah, yeah. I think going into university, I kind of had this like take on all comers mentality where I went into biochemistry, but mainly because um, since the U of L was, you know, a general liberal arts university, as a biochemist, you kind of had all your bases covered. You know, you took a bunch of science courses as a biochemist, but through blurs, I was able to do some drawing as well. Um, explore some other, you know, like, a, yeah, like explore some of the humanities. Uh, as I really did it, begin to fall in love with biochemistry more, um, it was taking up more and more of my time, mm -hmm. as you might imagine. Mm -hmm. So art definitely kind of got put on the back burner. And that's maybe even represented in like a size dependent relationship. So mm -hmm. uh, in grade 12, I could draw, I could paint something as large as this canvas. Um, also because I was 18 years old and lived at home and didn't really have to do anything as a yeah, yeah. self-sufficient adult. Yeah, yeah. So I could invest that amount of time and produce something that large. Yeah. As school progressed, the, si the physical size of my drawings tended to shrink to mm. the point where I think the type of art that came to define the most recent years of my life has been very small by comparison, mm. using very cheap materials, namely... Uh, I got really into making very small drawings with like cheap uh, Bic pens or just ballpoint pens. Right on. Mainly because, you know, when you're like eyeballs deep in notes and everything, I could kind of just meagerly squeeze out a little drawing, yeah. literally on like a post-it note, maybe like that yeah. large. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, 
So a lot of my art from those years, maybe even the last like five or seven years, uh, is yeah, like several hundred times smaller, smaller than, than what I was doing um, at the end of high school, yeah, I would yeah. say. But you've been able to do potentially several hundred times more because... I guess, yeah, know? just due to the relative, yeah, yeah like size. small commitment for each yeah. piece. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then that also makes me think back to like your attention to detail. Like, um, I don't know, is there a difference between the detail that goes into something mm. this large and something a lot smaller or, or is it just different? Or? I, no, that, oh, that's a really good question. I think... Um, yeah, I think when you're painting or drawing on a large scale, there is like a lot of detail and analysis that needs to go into it. But I think since the size itself can be daunting, it almost like incentivizes or encourages you encourages you to like be a bit more like liberal and uninhibited mm -hmm. with like the type of, you know, like brush strokes you're laying down. Mm -hmm. So uh, for, yeah, like the anti-Kithra painting behind me, uh, there was a lot of it happened in layers, I guess, but initially I would use very, yeah, like large brush, brush strokes just to kind of reduce the anxiety of having <laughs> such a large blank space. Yeah, yeah. Um, for really small drawings, though, it's kind of the opposite. Since you know at the end of the day you're maybe only going to have to render an image on like a few square inches perhaps even, <laughs> it's kind of like you can really just like fixate on every like square millimeter practically of the post-it note yeah um yeah so maybe in that way it's almost like whether or not you know what you're working on is like two square inches or whatever the dimensions of this are yeah. it's kind of funny how like the time can in a way start to be a bit of the same you know right yeah mm -hmm. the time and commitment i guess yeah and speaking of that like do you remember how long uh you said aren't Anti Kithra, yeah. What it's called. Do you remember how long that that took? Or yeah, okay. So um, yeah, this was the my last uh, semester as a high school student. I um, I finished it on April twenty seventh. I think I worked on it for probably about a month. I'd say, mm. um, like with very long hours most evenings to uh, get it yeah. done, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right on. Cool. And then like the smaller things, would you do them in like an hour or less or? Yeah. No, like uh, the smaller ones, I would tend to do those a bit faster, especially just due to the context in which I made it. You know, there'd be like midterms or finals looming or like lab reports. So I would have maybe like a glorious 40 minute interval all to myself to do one small drawing, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, moving along here mm -hmm. on our questions. Um, yeah. uh, what do you need more of in your life? What do I need more of? Yeah. Um, let's see. I think maybe along similar lines to the last question. Um, what I hope to accomplish still. Mm -hmm. I think I need more, I think I need more deliberately structured time that is free for me to, well, just kind of like think about the things I want to think about, mm. pursue the kind of creative ideas I have, I would mm. say. Mm -hmm. um, I guess this is something I've been thinking a lot of lately, just, you know, kind of being now a fully fledged adult by the time your late 20s roll around at least for me this is where it's really set in where it's like oh I'm uh, yeah like you know like the adult years are finally here like school's over the training wheels are completely gone you know yeah, yeah. and with that just comes all of like the kind of like brutal exigencies of everyday life you know um, I feel that there's like a lot of drawings I've sacrificed on the altar of like doing the dishes on time right, right. so yeah, yeah. um <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to strike that balance, I guess, of doing all the necessary logistical things of day-to-day -day living with those kind of like more long-term creative pursuits that, mm -hmm. you know, like I really want to do, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah, yeah, that's a really interesting answer because you kind of touch on like what it is you want, but also kind of like the how to get it. Like you mentioned that, mm -hmm. you know, time structure and and that's like potentially a way to achieve that balance, right? And mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, kind of contrary to that question, mm -hmm. what do you need less of 
in your life? <laughs> what do I need less of in my life? Uh, I need less. I need to uh, doom scroll less, just ah. in general. Um, I, I think it's a thing that many people, especially probably like in our demographic, struggle with, mm -hmm. right? You know, yeah, you just have like the bottomless, you know, like procession of stories of varying degrees of distress, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, and I mean, there are a lot of there are a lot of very real pressing issues that like as a generation we need to encounter but that's tempered by like i think just trying to like protect your own kind of like sense of well-being yeah, at yeah. the same time mm -hmm. um yeah no yeah let, less of uh <laughs> less of maybe looking where i don't want to go and fixating on very large abstract existential problems you know yeah yeah, yeah. Absolutely. No, you're not alone. <laughs> For sure. Not yeah. alone in that. Um, great. Uh, so another question we have here is, um, how do you cope when things get tough? How do I cope when things get tough? Um, I think a lot of that does come back to maybe just immersing myself in the things that I like find just like intrinsically rewarding and mm -hmm. the things that I I guess deeply do care about as a person. So I know in the past, uh, drawing itself has, yeah, like brought me great solace in times of, yeah, I guess like great discomfort or great, you know, like the stuff was going on. Mm -hmm. um, what else? I guess I'm really big into, yeah, then also just like immersing myself in various forms of comfort media, like either certain albums or films or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. I think when things are really unknown and distressing, there, there's, there's a lot to be said for maybe either engaging with a work of art or engaging in an artistic process yourself where like you're in more, you're more in control. You kind of have the skill set if you're an artist to, I guess, go through the requisite moves to like create something. Mm -hmm. And in a way, like you kind of rest a bit of control back in like a form of certainty, I guess, where mm. it's like, well, maybe this, issue whatever it may be is happening but it's like i fundamentally know if i can sit down in front of a canvas or a page like forms will start to emerge like things will happen and in a way it's like well there's at least like one thing that's kind of going okay mm -hmm. um similarly for like films or music i think if you kind of like know all the lyrics or can anticipate the the next movement or like the next scene or whatever mm -hmm. um yeah well once again you kind of already know what's going to happen which can be immensely comforting when going back to your last question so much in this day and age is characterized by like pitch black uncertainty right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um yeah no yeah, yeah absolutely no for sure um great uh our next question um what makes your life feel purposeful yeah what makes my life feel purposeful uh I think I think what that is has definitely changed over like the last few years. So um when I was back in university and even before that throughout high school, well and university for that matter, I think what kind of served as my purpose were kind of like the very large overarching life goals that you're kind of instilled as a child to want or that, or that you're told are important. I'm, I'm talking about education, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. when you're a kid, it's sort of like the path to success and like the metrics of your success are very easy, right? It's like, yeah. go to school, have like, you know, like don't be late, have a good attendance. Ideally, your grades are above a certain threshold. And then if you're meeting those, it's like you're objectively like doing your life as like a child or an adolescent correctly. Yeah. <laughs> um, even, and I know like when you're 18, of course, you're, you know, legally an adult, but I feel that like, at least for me, my mentality was um, much the same throughout my undergrad and even grad school for that matter, where yeah. as long as, you know, like your grades are doing okay and you're, you know, banging out X number of classes per semester, it's sort of easy to think, oh, like I am on the right path. Things are moving along and once again you have like objective ways to analyze that in mm -hmm. like courses taken grades achieved scholarship money all of that mm -hmm. um 
I think then grad school and then the pandemic for that matter really kind of threw that into disarray for me, but uh, for a lot of people, I think. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, this was all probably like dovetailing with just the turbulent nature of a person's 20s anyways. They're, mm -hmm. they're very fraught and confusing times where, where I was at the end of my degree, the pandemic happened, like the world as we know it closed for a time. And uh, I guess there was an immense absence where my purpose was kind of like obliterated or at least obscured and made very not as clear as I was kind of used to it being for the previous 20 odd years of my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got out of grad school, I think that was only intensified where um, it's almost like the, the things I found meaningful or purposeful once I had achieved them it was kind of very anticlimactic, I guess, right? Mm, mm. I, I think we all kind of get this, where um, if there is like some very large overarching goal you have in your life, it can really come to just define and punctuate every aspect of your day, right? Where you're kind of like, I am doing the thing, like either, you know, getting that degree or a certain job promotion. Maybe it's like an athletic accomplishment. There's some mm -hmm. really large tournament coming up. And you kind of just fixate on the process of the thing you're doing as well as like the imagined immense satisfaction you're going to have when it concludes and you attain it mm -hmm. and at least for me what I always find is is that when it actually happens it's it's just like oh um it's just like time goes on you know I guess I yeah. <laughs> need to eat supper and everything and yeah, yeah. it's Clark, Clark and Perry, Perry on the case da -na -na -na. Clark and Perry do what it takes da -na -na -na. Clark and Perry investigate the activities and interests of local artists in the Windy City's finest throughout both Lethbridge and Medicine Hat Alberta available on Telus Optic TV on demand Vidflex YouTube and more for limited time only terms and conditions apply da -na -na -na.